Welcome back to Little Steps Live. My name is Natasha, and today we'll be talking to Hong Kong Academy about their home school learning tips. Um, and just a few friendly reminders before we begin. Um, we do go live every two weeks, so if you are interested in, interested in our events, please go to our Facebook page, go to our events section, and there you can link on to the events that you're interested in, and um, a reminder will be sent to your phone. Second of all, we do have a wonderful newsletter full of jam-packed information. It's sent across to Hong Kong, Singapore, Jakarta, and KL. So if, if you would like to subscribe, then please go to the link in our description page. And then lastly, we are live. So if you've got any questions for us or for Hong Kong Academy, then please do send them our way. Send us some likes or any comments. We're happy to have those over. So let's begin. Um, so we've just completed in Hong Kong um, 10 long weeks of homeschool learning. So a huge congratulations to all the parents and the children out there. Um, we've done it and now we're on a really well-deserved Easter break. Um, and today Hong Kong Academy are going to give us an insight on how they are doing their homeschool learning and how they're helping their children. So Little Steps is very happy to introduce Virginia. Uh, welcome, Virginia. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Virginia Hunt, um, she is the primary school principal um, at Hong Kong Academy, and she actually holds a master's degree in early childhood and elementary education and an advanced master's in educational leadership. She's currently in the process of becoming an, adapt an adaptive schools trainer as well. So um, Virginia lives in Saikun with both her children who attended um, Hong Kong Academy. And what they liked most about the school was the ability to learn an extra language and the range of sports on offer. Um, and just to let you know that Hong Kong Economy, Academy sorry, is located in Saikun. Um, it is a non-profit non IB world school providing a highly personalized and holistic education for students aged between three to 18 years old. Um, so welcome again. Um, let's start off with just a little bit, tell me a little bit about yourself. Sure. I'm a, I'm a native New Yorker mm -hmm. who's been in education for over 20 years. And I um, came to education as a second career. And mm -hmm. I was really most interested in social change, ensuring that everyone had opportunities and recognizing that all children have gifts and that the role of the educator is to bring those unique gifts to their full potential for right. students. I also um, am very committed to the International Baccalaureate, the construction of knowledge, um, and I'm also an International Baccalaureate trainer as well, which has really supported me in working not only with parents, students, and teachers. Okay, great. So how long have you been at Hong Kong Academy then? This is my 13th year at Hong wow. Kong Academy. I originally had a three-year contract, and I very quickly fell in love with the mission, vision, and values of the school, not just for myself as an educator, but also for my own children, and really the opportunity to have them exposed and embrace the power and beauty of inclusion. Both my children came through the school, as you'd mentioned. My daughter's currently a junior in college. My son is a junior here. Um, and I think, you know, being on the three different campuses and seeing so many children come through our doors, I am proudest of this time. I'm so proud of how we've come together as a community of our students, of our parents, of our teachers, of our leadership. I can't even begin to express my gratitude to our admissions, our institutional advancement, operations keeping us safe, finance making it work for everyone. Our tech team has been phenomenal. They've been creative and innovative and so supportive. The faculty have got, gone above and beyond with their professionalism and their commitment and especially our leadership. Our leadership is so collaborative and we are so fortunate to have our head of school, Stephen Deere, leading us um, and really showing his vision and his commitment to the school and our identity and who we are. Great, excellent. That's really, really good to hear. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, today, we're gonna to be splitting up the uh, it, our chat today in four sections. So we're going to understand HKA's online program and how it's actually set up. Mm -hmm. Then we'll look at how HKA alters the curriculum to meet their students' needs, because not everybody's the same, of, of course. And then challenges and opportunities of online learning. 
And then we'll, we'll finish with staying sane, which will be one of my favorite topics. <laughs> um, so to begin with, um, when we look at Hong Kong's online program, what is your philosophy for online learning? Yeah, and I think our philosophy is similar to how we approach our curriculum when students are on campus. And right. that is that everything we do is purposeful. Everything is rooted in our identity, our mission. Mm. Uh, that, you know, the work that we do has to be meaningful, but it also has to be grounded in what our community needs. So recognizing not just the developmental needs of students, but also the uniqueness of the dynamics of different homes. Some children will have more, a sibling at home with them, learning alongside them. Some children will have parents who are both working. Some mm. children will be in another country and, you know, again, working in a different time zone. So really being very clued into what, is, what we're observing, what parents are feeding back, how we're responding and evolving. Uh, that's been really critical, allowing us to be adaptive and change with the needs of our families. You know, one of the things that we know, we, and we talked a little bit about this before we started, about the importance of being flexible, mm -hmm. the importance of being patient. And, uh, you know, there is no room for complacency right. in the time of learning online. Yes, of course, of course. And so how is the foundation designed to meet the unique, unique ranges of learning, sorry, unique range of needs and learning styles? Sure, absolutely. I mean, first of all, our teachers know their students. Right. Um, they've been from working with these students for an entire, you know, for the first semester, they mm -hmm. know them well. Our teachers naturally differentiate and that doesn't change when students go online. We still need to differentiate. We need to make sure that materials are designed for different learning styles, whether that's visual, audio, kinesthetic. It's very important that we continue to individualize those materials, that we're scaffolding lessons for students, ensuring that they have clarity, and then making sure that students have access to us for either additional meets, extra meets, or individual meets. Right, okay, of course. Um, so today we are splitting up today's uh, session into four areas. We've just covered how Hong Kong's uh, HKA's online program is set up. Um, and now we'll look on uh, to how HKA alters the curriculum to meet their student needs. Um, and then looking at challenges and opportunities of online learning. And then lastly, staying safe. So, okay, great. Let's just move on to Hong Kong Academies, how, how you alter the curriculum to meet your student needs. Um, what is the criteria for success for each child? I mean, how do you ensure that everybody feels successful and self-motivated? Yeah, and I really, I'm glad that you used that word, talking about success. Mm. That is critical in that children mm -hmm. need to feel successful, children need to be successful, and parents also need to feel successful in their role in mm -hmm. supporting their child. And I think that one of the things that's been very important to us is that we maintain that conceptual framework that we have within the primary years uh, program within the International Baccalaureate. So mm -hmm. I think it's important to recognize that we continue to run our curriculum as it is and that we continue with our standards and benchmarks. So in each of our subject areas, there are standards and benchmarks, and we do request that um, the students engage with what's happening online. And that, that's a really important piece is the engagement, that the children are engaged and participating. So one of the things that we make sure, and I talked a little bit about this in the earlier question, was that children and parents have access to us. So on any given day, children have live meets where they are meeting with the teachers and they're meeting for a host of reasons. Sometimes they're meeting for help. Sometimes mm. they're meeting to be social, which is critical. That's another big important part is recognizing that kids are social, but learning is also social. The other is that there's opportunities for children to share their work, for teachers to feed back on their work, right. as well as opportunities for instruction when needed online, rather just than um, the video, that there's interactive instruction. But again, mm -hmm. having that access, so students have access and parents have access. We have an immediate response email. So if, if it's a time when we're not online with kids and you have a question, you don't need to sit there being frustrated. You know that someone is manning an email and ready to respond to you. Right. In addition to that, we make sure that we are providing that parental support for our parents, really recognizing that they have been put in a very different role than they mm -hmm. typically are with their children. Um, and again, going back to meeting those individual needs of students. Okay, so in terms of engagement, do you have a lot of like virtual events or 
are you doing things like you know people can access libraries and how's that engagement going like sure absolutely and i think that What's important is we want to, we need resources, but so do kids. So, you know, the very, from the very beginning, any child who would like a device could pick up a device, kindergarten through grade five in the primary school. Our secondary school children already have a one-to-one -one, one -one laptop, right. but anyone could come and collect a device. We have kept, kept our libraries open. So we are checking out a tremendous amount of books daily. Um, which has been so fabulous to see. In addition to that, children also had access to come in and get their musical instruments. So we want to make sure that children have the tools they need. They've also picked up, whether it be um, writing journals and things like that, things that they've needed from the classroom, right. where children have got, come and collected manipulatives. So we're making sure that children have the tools that they need at home. Mm -hmm. Another piece that's so important is that we recognize that working from home, a one-to-one, -one, and in a small group is very different than working in school. And the pace at which children work is going to be a lot faster because they're not working in a group of over 20 children. And so recognizing that and that we do not want to fatigue our students. So mixing it up. So, for example, on Tuesday, we have Specialist Day. And Specialist Day is when we the children are exposed to their visual arts, their music, their physical education, their information community technology, their mm -hmm. library time. And often that's such a highlight. For children in the yeah. week and it's very important that those still are very much in place and to ensure that families weren't concerned with focusing so much on the homeroom work that we dedicated an entire day where children just focus on their specialist work so again allowing them to re-energize themselves right right okay something to look forward to and yeah on wednesdays we typically wear a half day on wednesday because we offer opportunities for our students to do longer after school activities they, they couldn't typically do as well as the professional development that we do for our faculty on wednesdays so on wednesdays we've introduced something called hk prime which is personal relevant inquiry through meaningful engagement and that's mm -hmm. project work so that's project-based work that children are doing um, and there's a host of things that they're doing and what it is it's a really an opportunity for them to take all this rich learning that they are getting from their online learning and apply it and generalize it in, again, relevant, relevant, meaningful engagements. Engagement. Okay. Excellent. Sounds really, really good um, and promising as well. Um, but obviously, there's always going to be challenges um, and op other opportunities as well. So what would you say are the main challenges of this online learning? Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest one is social isolation, isolation, right. because what we, what we know, children are social, learning is social and they are missing they're missing their teachers they're missing their friends they're missing that interaction i think in addition to that is the use of screens and so mm -hmm. kids are spending a lot of time on screens that they're yeah. using screens differently they're not using screens perhaps for some of the things that they would have used them for whether it be for playing games or gaming or videos right but they are definitely on screen so mm -hmm. the use of screens uh and then ensuring balance and so, you know, one of the things that happens in a classroom is that children will typically really not work for more than 10 to 15 minutes or sit in a group for more than 20 minutes. And so really ensuring that children are getting that movement, having those opportunities to educate that whole child, that, mm -hmm. that the specialist, we talk about that project work needs to apply your work. You know, we've also had some virtual events to support that's We have a hot cocoa house, which is kind of a mini talent show that are students do so we've had nice. pre-k's got talent we've had a continuous reading chair where we did read alouds all day we've had school wall events school wide events where we had um our secondary uh athletics director uh do a virtual sports day with our students so again staying connected opportunities to be interactive and also opportunities to be uplifted you know we had our community choir do a beautiful um video and and um on um lean on me and that was really beautiful for the nice. to see so i mean do you have much advice for parents and or recommendations about how like we can tackle those challenges do you have any tips at all for us yeah absolutely i mean i think that it's important to find ways for kids to be social and sometimes that is going to be online and it can be through a google meet it could be through zoom or skype uh, or a facetime mm. opportunities to just connect um, and it does, it's not always a peer from school, 
but it's, it's connected. Maybe it's a relative that's in another country. Maybe it's a, a neighbor that lives down the road. I know mm-hmm. right now we're very much aware of social distancing, but some villages and communities are, um, you know, self-quarantining. So if, if your community has quarantine, giving children opportunities to be social, you can also be social within your own family, you know, in terms right. of the relationship with siblings, relationship with parents um, as well, you know, in terms of having those interactions and really taking that time to sit down and have rich conversations, not just about school, mm-hmm. but about what's what's going on in their hearts right now. Right. And, it's a really tough time. Um, Okay, so what would you say are the opportunities? Because obviously there's the bad things, but what are the, the opportunities with this online learning? Yeah, I mean, one of the things, we just had our parent-teacher conferences with our parents, and one of the questions that we asked parents, what are new skills that you're seeing in your child? Right. And this, this opportunity for self-discovery, this mm-hmm. opportunity for reflection, and mm-hmm. for kids to be communicators and to be really advocate for themselves and be able to talk to their teachers as well as the resilience that we're seeing in kids. I think the other is that the programs are really quite individualized, more so than they actually can be during a a typical school day, because Mm -hmm. when the teacher is responding to a class of over 20 students, now they're really working very individually with students because that's how they're learning at the moment. And the other is that there are so many ways that we learn and take those opportunities and, you know, that this is, for many families, they say this has been a gift, a gift of time with our children that we, we would never have gotten um, if this didn't happen. You know, an opportunity to go on a family hike, an opportunity to cook together, yeah. to play board games. You know, again, learning comes in many different ways and to really embrace that and see okay. those opportunities. And then I think, you know, what it's doing for family relationships, siblings mm. coming so close when they're often so distracted by yeah. the other opportunities that are around them. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, we're seeing that the closeness of, of siblings and the connectedness of parents with their children. Mm-hmm. It's been really lovely to see those family relationships developing in a way that probably would not have happened if we were still on campus. Yeah, totally agree, totally agree. Really, really good points there. Mm-hmm. Um, we're now going to head into our last section, which is to do with staying sane and and how how you suggest we should stay sane at home. (laughs) So how is Hong Kong Academy supporting their parents during this challenging time? Sure, I think that, you know, one of the things that we feel very important is very important is communication. Right. So ensuring that there's a feedback loop. So again, as I mentioned, you know, they've got the immediate response, they can have live help. We also do a weekly survey where we're getting feedback from parents. In addition to that, teachers do a weekly check-in with okay. family. So keeping those lines of communication open. Right. I think the other is um, that our counselors are proactive. We have three counselors in the school, one right. counselor, they're all social emotional. One of them supports the post-secondary for our older students, but ensuring that we are proactive. So we're not waiting for a family to be in crisis. We are reaching out right. to the family. Uh, we also make sure that we have um, a, a support group so every Tuesday and Thursday, the counselor and I go online for any family that wants to drop in and just get support from us, get support from their other community family members. And, you know, so someone says, well, you know, I'm really having a hard time with this. Someone else comes in with, hey, I, I tried this. Why don't you try this? You know, and again, the, they're supporting each other as a community and yeah. we have the resources there, but we're also making sure that we're accessible to our families. Okay. That's great. Really good to hear. It's like all about teamwork, really, isn't it? It's all about teamwork and it's also all about, I really feel very important about being proactive. You know, I think about our counselor, she also has weekly meets with every grade level. So the kids again can drop drop in, we call it Chatterbox. And they can drop in to Chatterbox and just chat with the counselor and she plays games with them and just kind of gives kids an opportunity to talk about how they're feeling, what's in their mind. Right. I think I need to join HK and myself. (laughs) Come and speak to one of your counselors. (laughs) Sounds excellent. but do, uh, so you have counselors available. We've touched upon them. Um, and you said they, they meet with the children on a di- daily? Sorry? So our counselor always has a social emotional message that goes out as part of their weekly learning. Right. And okay. then the counselor is also available for a live meet with the children for our, what we call our chatterbox. So you okay. can drop in um, for a live meet. She also has, we also have students that we've targeted 
who we feel are just needing a little extra boost right now and need extra support. So then we're we're working individually with them. And then we offer the bi um the twice weekly sessions with our um parents. So they Thanks. can drop in every Tuesday and Thursday afternoon. Oh brilliant. Okay, I'll be there. <laughs> so I, I I imagine parents are very concerned about how their children are performing uh, during such a long break from school. So do you have any words of comfort at all? Yeah, well, first of all, parents are doing a great job. And I think they need to know that. I think parents are hardest on themselves. They, they are doing a great job. The other is, is that we are so connected with our kids and our families. If we had any concerns, we're, we're stepping in. We're coming in. We're supporting. We're doing an individual Google Meet to make sure that children are where they need to be. So again, that communication piece is really important. I think that parents are putting a lot of pressure on themselves and they're having, you know, is this enough? Is this the right expectation? Again, that's where the communication is so important, that weekly feedback um, that they're able to give us and we're able to give them. I think another piece that parents should do is every day they should celebrate something. Mm -hmm. They should also think of something, talk to their children, talk about what they're going to celebrate, talk about something that they have accomplished, something that they're grateful for, but then also talk about something that surprised them and something that's a challenge. Because remember, we talked a little bit about self-discovery and the opportunity for that. So really having an opportunity to have that communication with your child and finding out how they're doing, how are you right. doing? You know, and I think the, that's what we want. We want kids to feel successful and we also want them to keep feeling good about themselves. Yeah, yeah, it's a really tough time. But I mean, your points today have been really, really insightful. And I just want to say thank you. We've come to an end for our interview. Um, if, it, if there's anything else you'd like to add at all or anything, any other points, Virginia, that we haven't covered today? Yeah, no, I mean, I think we've covered quite a bit. And I think that what's important is for everyone to know that there's going to be highs and mm-hmm. there's going to be lows. Yeah. And that's okay and that's to be expected and that you're not alone. You know, right. reach out to the, either the families in your community or, you know, those around you because you're not alone. Many people are experiencing the same thing and they can be a resource to you as well as your school. So yeah. it, it's really important, again, to go back to those lines of communication. Everyone is in this to make it work. Of course, yes. Thank you so much. That's been really, really great today. Um, just, to, just to finish off, I just want to say, um, I don't, we haven't had any questions come through just yet, so we will forward those on to Virginia once they do come through. Uh, be sure to, uh, go to go to our website. We are a brilliant resource for families in Asia. Uh, we have, if you would like to follow us on Facebook, there is a follow button on our Facebook page. Please do so. Um, today we have got a fabulous uh, school newsletter that goes out today to Hong Kong. Hong Kong Academy are in that newsletter. Uh, next week for Singapore too. Uh, so please do subscribe to our newsletters. And um, I think we're done. Although somebody's hoping. <laughs> so just... Oh, right. I've got a question. Okay, great. Do you have any virtual open houses? at all yes so we are doing a host of different things for our admissions we actually did a another we did an admissions facebook live um and we are doing virtual tours yes and we're talking you know directly with uh prospective families and we're so excited because we, we're still admitting kids during this online right. time which okay. has been really exciting we have a new student starting on monday when we get back um okay. we're very excited to welcome our new family. So, and we, and before this all started, when we came back from Lunar New Year break, we welcomed two new students. So, and I think that's, you know, a true testament to the integrity of our program. Definitely, definitely. Well, congratulations. It's, it sounds like an excellent program and uh, well done to you guys as well. Um, so, over and out. Thank you to, so much today, Virginia, and um, speak to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.